uh, Mr. David Price, $1.491 million. For Q1. So congratulations, David. And since this is the first time that we're getting back together, we have one more thing for you. This is, this is special from the Blake Group. And you guys have heard of the, the $100,000 income rings, right? There's probably a handful of people in here that have them on. It's great getting back together. We were going to get back together, I think, in January, and then we pushed it for COVID. So we're going to continue to turn this back up and get everybody back together because I just believe everybody's going to leave excited. So this is, this is for David from the Blake Group and from Doug. We now have a, a half a million dollar income ring from 2021. <laughs> keep, keep in mind, the income was right at $750,000. And the one thing that I think about with David is his story about, what was it, about maybe five or seven years ago? When were you on the oil rig? About eight, yeah, seven, seven years ago. So seven years ago, this man took a job on an oil rig making $7.25 an hour washing dishes. Minimum wage, yep. And now, eight years later, not, eight, not an easy eight years. It was probably, he probably quit a bunch of times, too. He, was, he became so, so good at recruiting because he had to re-recruit himself every day. So he had to look at all the different angles. Eight years later, guys, $750,000 in one calendar year. So I'm going to shut up and turn it over to the man, Mr. David Price. Thank you guys again for everything. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Appreciate you, Robert. So appreciate, appreciate that, man. Thank you, Robert Shira, for all the kind words. And... Doug Blake, just amazing, amazing event. You know, all you guys were showing up and stuff like that. And it just, it's, it's always so great to talk in front of people. You know, always, always get a little nervous, right? But like nervous is where I, I, I work, I thrive in that spot, right? The not knowing and just like that feeling. I, I love that, that spot in that area. But you know, I wanna talk about why did I become an insurance agent? I'm gonna tell you, I became an insurance agent because I refused to, to grow up. That's why I became an insurance agent. You guys remember when you were a kid? And you could have been anything you wanted to be, right? You could have even been a dinosaur if you wanted to when you were a kid, right? You believed it, right? There's nothing stopping you. You could be anything you wanted to be when you you're a kid. And I remember that. Like, I could have been a police officer. I could be invisible. I can fly. Whatever I wanted to be, I could be, right? We, we, and I think we all believed that when we were children. And then something happened, right? And we stopped believing, you know? And, and Robert talked a little bit about belief. He talked a lot of bit about belief. He, he stole a little bit of my thunder because that's what I want to talk about. But it's the most important thing. <laughs> Right? And at some point, we just stopped believing. And the reason I became an insurance agent is I grew up, I lived in trailers, I lived in the projects, I lived in homeless shelters, I lived in hotels. I went through it all. I always had what I needed. My mom always did her best to take care of but, but I went through every single thing. I've been on both sides of the tracks, but I always believed that I was gonna do something great, right? I might not have been doing great things, right? My actions might not have equaled what I needed them to equal to do great things, but I always believed that I was gonna do something great. I refused to grow up. That's it, I'm just a big kid, right? And I believe I could do something so great, so amazing, and because of that, I put in the actions and efforts to do it. You know, there's a lot of people that think I'm absolutely nuts. I spend money like crazy on things to try to build my business, right? P people look at that like that's crazy, but you know what, those aren't the people I hang around with. I go out of my way to find seven-figure earners and become their friends. I saw a guy, he showed up to a car show with a Bugatti. I saw the car first, I didn't see the guy, I'm looking around, I'm like, I'm like babe, you see who got out of that car? Where, where is he? <laughs> That's the guy right there. Like, hey, how you doing? My name's David. I, I introduced myself, I got his phone number. I said, listen, I know you probably don't need any money, but if you wanna go out to eat, I'm gonna pay, right? Because I refuse to give up. I wanna be where that guy is. I wanna know how you drive a $1.3 million car to a car show. I don't know how to do that yet, but I'm gonna figure it out because I believe I can. You know, and I need all you to figure out where that child was. Why did you stop believing? What changed, right? And there's levels to this belief stuff. Anyone ever see Peter Pan? Yeah, we all saw Peter Pan. What happens when they put the little pixie ducks on you? Do you remember? Nothing, nothing happens at all. You gotta believe first, 
right? You guys got pixie dust all over you. We're in it. We spray it through the air conditions. It's in the water. You got the pixie dust all on you. But if you don't start believing, you're not going to fly. You're not going to start seeing the changes that you need to see. Does that make sense to anyone? Yeah. Makes sense to everyone. You all shook your head up and now. So how, how are we going to get everyone believing, right? And there's levels to it. Wherever you're at right now, including myself, I believe that I can get to this level, and that's why I'm here. Right? You made how much last year, Dana? $180,000. You believed you could do it, but what do you have to do to make a million dollars? You need to believe at a whole different level. See, all the other stuff is just details. Once I tell you you could have this result, Doug Blake, right, thank goodness he answered my phone call, right? Doug Blake's the one that brought me into this business. Doug Blake's an amazing man. And I had two questions for him. One, I knew he was making a ton of money, and I believed if he could do it, I could do it too, right? So that was it. That's where the belief was there. Two, I've been in multiple businesses before, and I know what was really hard for me is not having people to talk to, right? I, I did a couple network marketing things, and I, I just didn't have the game plan. I just didn't know what it took. I, I had a landscape business. I thought you put your your little ad in the yellow pages and your phone just rings and rings and rings and you get all these yards, and you cut all these grasses and that's not exactly how it worked at all. And, and, and I just couldn't figure it out and I couldn't figure it out. But at one point I was working for a company doing uh, vehicle repossessions. If you didn't pay your bill, I was coming to take your car. And this company would send me 10, 20, 30 cars to find. Like every single day I had stacks and stacks of all these cars to find. And what I realized was I had a need, a demand to meet, right? Those cars to find were leads. I was strictly on commission and I worked every minute. I mean, I was up at three o'clock in the morning trying to find your car and snatch it from you. <laughs> I, and, and I worked it and I worked until I couldn't see their house numbers anymore, right? And, and I made more money than I've ever made in my life because I had the demand and I was being paid commission based off of my results. And, and, it, and it made sense to me. I was like, man, this is what I was missing. Every single business I had before, every entrepreneurial thing I tried before, like, yes, I believed. Yes, I was putting the action, but I didn't have the game plan. I just didn't know what to do. I didn't have a good model to follow of somebody. When I talked to Doug Blake, Doug Blake, will you mentor me? Will you teach me what to, you do? You're the Blake group. Can I be the price group? That was our conversation. Right, that's what was important, the mentorship, someone to teach me how to do it, because I believed I could. So I went from repo and cars, and then all of a sudden there was this storm in Louisiana, and it rained, and it rained, and it rained, and all these houses got flooded. And I'm driving around, and I'm looking for these cars, and all these houses are gutted. And I'm like, man, I'm never gonna find any cars. But what I did find was another problem to solve. These houses needed to be rebuilt. And I knew nothing about rebuilding a house. Listen, I have problems hanging pictures on the wall. I didn't own a hammer at the time. I had a car that barely ran 130,000 miles. My friend had to sell to me and me pay him in payments while I was on his insurance because my credit was so bad, right? Dead broke. I was so, so broke and that wasn't long ago. That was eight, nine years ago, right? Seven, maybe even less than that, maybe five, seven, six years ago. And so I saw this issue, I'm like, all right, well, these guys need houses rebuilt, and I'm willing to do the work, I just need to find someone that could fix these houses. And I need to find someone that actually is gonna let me fix their house, <laughs> right? Those are the two things I need, because I can't find cars anymore, because all these neighborhoods are all gutted, so the cars aren't gonna be where they're at. I'm on commission, right? I found a new opportunity. So I'm knocking on doors, I'm calling my friend up who I knew he was out of work and I knew he knew something about construction and how to do estimates, because I'm like, that's the first part, the estimates, we gotta get the estimates done. So we're knocking on doors, I got him with me, he's real shy, he don't like talking to people, I love talking to people, hey, how you doing? Uh, listen, I'm really sorry, what happened? Do, do, you need, do you need a free estimate? We're giving free estimates. I did over 100 estimates, this is Louisiana, in the heat, the mold, uncomfortable, Right, don't own a pickup truck, don't own a construction company, don't own anything. Meanwhile, I'm getting the website made up, I'm getting the licenses, I'm getting everything I was supposed to get. And finally, the guy calls up, he's like, hey, I wanna meet you. We show up to the house, he's got two houses, it was a six-figure job, he gave me an $80,000 deposit. Boom, I was in business. I bought a pickup truck. You, you own a construction <laughs> company, you need a pickup truck first, right? So I buy the pickup truck, right. and I'm like, all right, we're in business now. I called up my friend in New Jersey, has a construction company. I said, hey, I got this guy. He's going to pay me this much to do this house. How much will you charge me to fix this house? 
He's like, I'll, I'll be over there. Shows up in the motorhome with the crew. We knock the house out while he's doing that. I'm back out knocking on more doors, looking for more clients, right? Solving more problems. Within eight months, the company invoiced $800,000. Right, my accountant's like blown away. He's like, dude, like you guys are doing like eighty, ninety, hundred and twenty thousand dollar jobs. All my other clients are doing like ten thousand dollar jobs. You're you're absolutely crushing it. You know, me and my me and my uh, my business partner. I brought on my business partner. We 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 started having some issues and stuff, and I ended up walking. And I ended up walking from that, and, and time to find something new. You know, and and I've always been looking for these different opportunities, and I've always been looking for away, right? To, because I'm not growing up. Like, I'm going to live in a mansion. I'm going to be driving exotic cars. I'm going to be helping all kinds of people. I'm going to be doing amazing, amazing things. And I just need to get to that part of my life because I'm not there yet, right? It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of effort. So a friend of mine, a mutual friend of mine and Doug says, hey, Dougie's making a ton of money. I'm like, well, what the heck's Dougie doing? How is he making a ton of money? Me and Doug grew up together. We we're in besties. But we're acquaintances, we're friends. And he told me he's making a ton of money. I'm like, well, what is he doing? He's like, this thing with insurance. Like, insurance. I've always heard insurance was a great business, right? The number one industry right now for income is insurance. I always heard it was good. I had no model. I, I had no way to get in the business. I, I didn't even know how to get started, but now I had it in. I look at Doug's Facebook page, I'm like, Doug's a R RVP. That's a regional vice president. He's got to be doing something big there. I know a regional vice president at an insurance company. Sounds like an opportunity to me. You know, called Doug up a couple times, kind of, you know, started getting my license, and then I actually stopped getting my license because Hurricane uh, Maria came, and I ended up going to Puerto Rico and working out there and helping out, again, meeting a, a need after a disaster. Called Doug back when I got back. You know, the, the, the phone conversation, it was kind of hard to get him on the phone, right? But, but finally get Doug on the phone. He gives me the opportunity and uh, get my license. And, and I was super pumped. There's only two things I was worried about. One, I was used to six figure income at that time, you know, coming from nothing, minimum wage, washing dishes, mopping floors, cleaning toilets on, on an oil rig, um, sleeping on people's couches. But I finally got to a point where I was used to making six figures. And I was like, man, like, it's cool. Like, I understand this is a new business and it's gonna, I'm probably gonna take a pay cut right? Because I'm an entrepreneur and you got to realize like it's not going to be like perfect. I, I don't know nothing about selling insurance. I didn't even know what burial insurance was, but I need to give myself a chance to learn. But do people make six figures really the first year? Because if someone else can do it, I could probably do it, right? I just got to make sure I work harder. I can't just say, oh, Ramon does it. So if he does it, I could do it while I'm watching TV, right? I, I, I need to, my goal was to like outwork Ramon or whoever the, it is to make sure I can make more than that person because I don't think I'm very talented, right? I don't think I have the skills that I need, but I have the desire and I just have to work harder than the person to, to overcome the lack of skill that I might have had or the lack of experience that I had. So Doug, do people make six figures the first year? Yeah, David, people follow the system in the will. Okay. And how do you find your clients? The most important thing, people get so stuck on being an entrepreneur and saying, hey, you know what? I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to cut grass. Okay, great. If you're going to cut grass, whose grass are you going to cut? Well, I don't know. I'm going to find people. Okay, sounds like you got some issues there. You know, I want to sell real estate. Great. If you had your real estate license right now, who would you sell a house to? Well, I don't know. I would have to find people. Sounds like you're going to have an issue. Doug, if I'm selling insurance with you, who am I going to sell insurance to? You're gonna sell insurance to people, calling our TV commercials, hitting our direct mail advertisements, hitting our Facebook leads, hitting our website leads. Okay, so you have people that want insurance right now. Yes, how many people? A lot. Okay, Doug, but I may or I may not build a massive and giant, huge sales team. Are you gonna have enough people for them too? Dave, leads will never be an issue with us. Are you sure? Yes, right? So now I got an issue, right? We have, our, our, our problem is we have more people looking for insurance with us than senior life could, hit, could possibly, possibly help. That is a great problem to be involved in, right? So I had that. I got the mentorship. We got a system. So now what? what what's the next part? Got to go to work, right? I remember Doug, he gave me a hundred leads. My first set of leads, I was in Louisiana. We, we're booming in Louisiana now, but I was the original Louisiana guy basically, right? So we didn't have a lot of the infrastructure and the lead system, everything rolling there yet. Yeah, Doug gave me these two-hour leads. 
that were like two to five years old from agents that left. Uh, I think they're called follow-up leads. I'm not even sure if they even exist anymore. And he gave me a hundred of them. I'm like, all right. And I start knocking on doors. And my whole thought process was like, I just need to learn what I'm doing, right? Like making money is great, but I need to develop the skills to one, learn how to sell insurance, but I'm trying to build a business. I can't build a business, I can't teach people how to do something I don't know how to do. Does that make sense, yeah. right? We, I need to know what I'm doing. So I need some obstacles, I need some people to yell at me so I know how to deal with teaching people what to do when they yell at you, right? I, I need all these crazy things to happen to me. I, need, I wanna gain five years of experience in one year. That was my goal. How do I gain five years of experience in one year? How many doors are you gonna knock on in, in, in five years? I need to knock on those amount of doors in one. That was my thought process. Every day I was out in the field, 007 was the man. He was the, he was, he was the, the field, he was the man, he was the number one agent in the Blake group the year before. And I'm like, all right, cool. So if 007's knocking on 20 doors today, I gotta do at least 21. That was my thought process, right? Same thing, if you're learning to sell on the phone right now, you, and you talk to a telesales agent, and they're like, oh, well, I make $200 a day. Okay, I need to make 201, right? Because as long as I'm giving you more activity and a long enough timeline, I'm going to catch up to you. And that was my thought process every single day, first door at nine o'clock, and I took a picture, put it on Telegram, that was a way to hold myself accountable, right? Because if now, it's, I gotta do it because they're not gonna see me at the front door, right? I have to hold myself accountable. I have to play little games with myself because that's what, being not just this business, being an entrepreneur is hard. Being an entrepreneur is hard, right? So if you plan on being an entrepreneur, it doesn't matter what company, what product, what you're doing, it's going to be hard. So once you're at peace with that, the rest is easy, right? Because we just choose our hard, and you guys are all here, right? So you chose your hard, right? So, so you gotta keep the, the blinders on, you know? And it's easy, listen, I've been on focus before, and guess what, anytime I've been on focus, my money didn't stop flowing, my production stopped flowing, right? It was like being on a treadmill. I wasn't going anywhere. I was just running, losing, running out of breath. Like it was, it was horrible. And then I realized, what, what the heck am I doing? I need to get refocused. I chose my hard. This is what I'm going to create a business with. I have no other choice. Nothing else exists. I'm being impatient, right? I remember getting on my knees and praying for patience because I wanted to be where Doug was in six months in this business and I couldn't figure out why I wasn't. <laughs> then I realized I wasn't, who the heck am I? Right. I still got a lot to learn, right? Doug, Doug, Doug went through all that. It was my turn to go through it. I needed to, to, to be patient. I needed to stop focusing on making the money and start focusing on developing the skills. Mm. Right, you saw my income, 740 something thousand dollars. My first six months, it was $30,000. Right? Not fun, but necessary. Yeah. So many people go to college. Who here has some college education? Raise your hand. How much money do you spend to go to college? $100,000 to go to college. For how many years did that take to spend all that money? Four years. Four years. $25,000 a year. I promise you this. If you get $25,000 worth of leads a year, four years in a row, Yep. You're gonna have something that no one can take from you. You're gonna have a skill to create a multi six-figure income at that point. Ooh. And I guarantee it. If you work $25,000 with the leads four years in a row, that's, it's a given, right? Because the leads are your education, right? You're an entrepreneur. You need to educate yourself on being an entrepreneur. You need to learn how to deal with objections. More people are gonna say no to you than they're gonna say yes to you, and that's okay. You need to understand, that's fine. People say no to me all the time. It's all right, I'm gonna find somebody to say yes. You know, it, it's like the casino. What happens if you win a million dollars in the casino? Do they kick you out? No. Why, why don't they kick you out? Because they know as long as they keep you in there, the odds are, the math proves it, you're giving that money back. Yeah. They just have to keep you in there long enough. And if you follow our system, and you work the appropriate amount of leads, 
and you do it every single day and you give it enough time, it is impossible for you to fail in this business. How do I know? Because I got a lot of agents that went through that, right? That suffered and struggled and, and weren't natural salespeople, weren't natural people people, were introverted, right? But they got enough leads, they gave it enough time, and now they're sitting here as multi -six, or six figure earners. This business will give you anything you want. True. But you have to believe. It all comes down to the belief. And sometimes you have to recommit to the belief. Right? Just because you walk in here and say, you know what, I believe, and you walk out, it doesn't work that way. Your actions have to be tied with the belief. How are the actions tied with the belief? Investing in your business, right? Getting the leads that you need. If you're trying to build an agency, how are we gonna to try to build an agency? How does Walmart hire people? Job postings? Job postings, they spend a lot of money. Right, just, just like that. Amazon, Facebook, all these companies, they spend thousands of hundreds, millions probably, yeah. millions, right, on, on hiring people. So I'm like, well, cool, if I wanna be like Walmart, I need to figure out how to spend a million dollars on hiring people if they're spending a million dollars on hiring people. That's it, I'm, I'm, I just gotta figure it out. You know, and, and, and I continue to scale my business and I continue to find different ways to invest in myself, myself personally, right? And then also my business. I love to see every single one of you guys get a ring next year, next quarter, next whatever, wherever. Like seeing people succeed in this business has been the best blessing. Like, yes, I have some nice things. I buy some cool toys. I go to some cool places. I have a lot of freedom. But when someone like Dana, calls me up and says, thank you, because I live in a high rise in Miami now because of you, like that stuck with me, right? That's the reason I wake up every day. That's the reason, listen, does anyone get tired? I get tired, yeah. we all get tired. Even Doug Blake gets tired. <laughs> but I also remember laying on the couch and being tired too, right? You're not gonna not be tired. It doesn't matter what you're doing, you're going to get tired. It's, an, it's, it's a feeling, we're human beings. We just have to drive through it, stop talking ourselves out of winning. I spent a long time talking myself out of winning. A long time trying to figure out how to do things on my own, a long time Googling and, and I got this and let my ego stop me from being successful. And when you start learning to ask for help, put in the actions, follow the system, follow the plan, have some patience, and give it the time that you need, right? Four years of college, what, what degree did you get? I got a bachelor's in science of, in marketing. Science of marketing, did you use it by any chance? I did, actually. That's I good. Very long. I was a bartender. Bartender, <laughs> right? That's it, you're a highly qualified bartender. <laughs> That's what I did. Very highly qualified bartender, right? So again, you, you're willing to spend $100,000. I mean, I had other corporate jobs after that, but that was initially what right. I did when I graduated because there really wasn't I didn't think that I was qualified to do anything after that, really. Yeah, the belief, right? right? And that's it. A lot of people spend money on college. I went to college. I spent two years worth of college. I'm one degree away from associates, one, one class away from associate's degree. I was like, I don't even know why I'm doing this. Like, I just stopped. <laughs> just completely stopped. Like, one more class, like I got a little certificate. I just, like, this is stupid. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm wasting my time. You know? It, it, and it's just amazing to see what someone can accomplish. And... The hardest thing for me is watching someone not believe, right? You know, having a conversation with somebody and, and trying to coach them and mentor. Listen, I will give you the blueprint of exactly what I did to get this far, right? I, don't, I'm, I can't tell you how to get further yet because I haven't done it, but I'll give you the exact blueprint of what I did. I'll tell you exactly what I did, where I spent money, how I spent money, and what I spent all day doing. But the problem is people don't believe they could accomplish what I accomplished, so they won't do the things that I've done. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's like my horror, like why not? Like come on, it'd be so much fun if we're all doing this. Let's all buy $100,000 Jeeps and go four wheeling together. Yeah. You know? So anyway, really glad you guys are all here. Super pumped and fired up. You know, the Blake Group is just crushing things. We will be the largest final expense agency in no time. We are on track and on pace to do it. Um, and that's gonna be fun, right? So you're all part of the Super Bowl team, right? But, but let's get y'all, let's get everyone in the field. Let's get everyone on that ball, touching that ball. Let's get everyone on the field. Let's have some fun. Let's hire some people. Listen, I imagine 
the Wolf of Wall Street, like scene, but without all like the drugs and, and, and the other stuff, right? Where we're just having great parties, doing amazing things, all making money, all having a lot of fun, inviting people, and, and driving the cars we want to drive and living the way we live. Like that's the, the vision, right? Because I refuse to give up and that's what's gonna happen. That's it. I'm just looking for those people, right? And I believe we got the people we need for it now, right? So let, let's do it, right? Let's, the Pixie Ducks is all over you guys. It's Senior Life Insurance Company, Pixie Ducks, so it's actually special and branded. Um, I wanna see everyone win, and let's do it, man. Let's do it, man. You guys all deserve it, man. And more importantly, your family deserves it. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. You know, I see it. I'm so glad that I believed in it, and, and, and it wasn't always that choice. You know, I, I, I did have some doubts. Right, I did have to rehire myself. It wasn't always easy. You know, it was definitely, definitely rough, but thanks again.